What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, DC Too Cool, back in for another video. Today's topic is WWE SummerSlam 2016 review. Now, I didn't see the pre-show or anything. The only thing I saw was the kickoff match, which was, uh, well, not the kickoff match, duh. Well, yeah, it's part of the kickoff match series. Um, and the only one I saw was the Sheamus versus Cesaro, uh, best of seven. Now, pretty good match. Uh, pretty good match. Pretty good solid match. Uh, what can with the match itself? Uh, has some really good spots in there. Pretty good match. Um, my only issue was that Cesaro lost this, and I feel like Cesaro's going to win the series. But I feel like this big, this big pay per view and this big match, I feel like he needed this way more than Sheamus. Sheamus has been world champion, WWE champion, United States champion. I don't think he's held the IC yet or the tag titles, but he's had a lot of success. Way more Cesaro's had. I feel like Cesaro should have won this on the big stage of SummerSlam. Even if he goes over at Clash of Champions, which is the next pay-per-view, it won't mean as much because it's not at SummerSlam. That's a huge marquee pay-per-view. The biggest in their calendar year next to WrestleMania. The second biggest. So I feel like Cesaro should have won that match. Um, moving on. Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Or Jericho and Owens. Because their name is Jericho. Apparently, <laughs> um, defeat Enzo and uh, Cass. I really thought Enzo and Cass were going to win this match. I thought it was going to be dissension within the ranks. I thought uh, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho were going to get into it. I thought Owens was going to super kick him or something like that and walk out on him, um, causing Enzo and Cass to pin Jericho because it means more beating Jericho, the legend, than it does beating the everyday Mick Carter and Kevin Owens. Um, but Jerry KO actually won the match. Uh, so I guess it's going to be an actual tag team, not just a one-off. I thought it was going to be a one-off and just throwing them two together just for this particular pay-per-view. Apparently, they're going to be a legitimate uh, team on, on Raw. So, at least, at least that's the way it seems. So, uh, I can't be mad at that. They were good together. They're two uh, great uh, talents. So, you know, his own cast will get theirs. So, there you go with that. Pretty good, uh, solid little opening match. Wasn't nothing too much. Just, you know. Had a great, had a great uh, ending, great spot for the ending, although it was uh, mostly missed, but you know, it was still a pretty good ending, pretty good spot, and uh, you know, there you go with that match. Next match was uh, Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the women's title, and match was pretty good, a lot of sloppiness in the early going, uh, a lot of botches, unfortunately. I'm um, hoping they can smooth it out because I was really looking forward to them too. Really going in and still in the show, much like Bailey, uh, Bailey and uh, Sasha Banks did last year and take over Brooklyn. That was amazing. I was really looking forward to something like that. Um, really good match. Has some great spots. Uh, can't say anything about the match other than some of the sloppiness at different points in the match and the botches, you know. Um, but the match was actually uh, pretty good, and I did not see Charlotte beating Sasha Banks. I thought Sasha Banks was going to retain. Um, but when I thought about it after the fact, it makes a lot of sense because there's really no top divas or, excuse me, top women on the Raw roster right now other than Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Everybody else is kind of, you know, low tier, you know, or not up on their level. So it makes sense that, you know, they're automatically got a new storyline and, and, and continue the rivalry, not a new storyline, but continue the rivalry of those two into the next pay-per-view for the title. You know, instead of have to, to reset and try to find a new feud and build somebody else back up, which need to be building somebody up right now while those two are in the middle of the feud. Um, so, Charlotte beat Sasha Banks for the Women's Championship. Um, and it was a pretty clever way of making Sasha look strong while losing at the same time. You know, I had her in a bank statement, cross face, and then she rolls over on the side, shoulders her down, three second pin, you know, um, so cool. Um, pretty good match. Moving on. The Miz versus Apollo Crews for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, I thought going into this, Apollo Crews would win the match, but via disqualification, thanks to Maurice's shenanigans, uh, the Kyle Apollo Crews looking strong. But they didn't go that way. Miz just beat the boy clean, which, I mean, it's fine. I mean, Apollo Crews still has time to grow and everything. You know, I, I didn't expect him to win the title. Um, it, it was a pretty okay match. Pretty okay match. Could have been a lot better, you know. Uh, but it was, it was okay match. Um, Miz beats Paulo Cruz clean. I mean, it's an okay match. Can't say much about it, you know. Got to see more from both of them in the future. Here we go. Match of the night. AJ Styles versus John Cena. Uh, to end the rivalry. 
this match was the best match of the night. Amazing match. AJ Styles, John Cena both went in. Uh, Styles kicked out of three FUs or three attitude adjustments, two regular ones. And he got kicked out of the super attitude adjustment. That's the first time I have ever seen my kick out of the super attitude adjustment. We've never seen that had to be forced to use a super attitude adjustment. The attitude adjustment off the second rope. He beat everybody with her. All the way back since he first debuted the move with Bobby Lashley at Bash, uh, was it Red American Bash or Bash of the Beach? Yeah, see, I pay attention. I know about my product. Years ago, that was the first time he debuted that move. And ever since he pulled it out, he's beaten everybody with it. Styles is the first and only person to kick out of that. So that was great to see Styles kick out of that, put on an excellent performance. And he really lived up to the hype this uh, this tonight. Um, and Styles hit him with the Styles Clash for the third time. Uh, and hit him with a second phenomenal form right after the Styles Clash. And I was just praying, like, oh, my God, please don't counter this. Please don't catch him or something. And so that's what happened. Uh, they he beat him. He caught him with the Styles Clash. Caught him with a phenomenal uh, form or elbow, whatever. Right after beats uh, John Cena clean. One, two, three, no help. All right, moving on. Gallows and Anderson versus the New Day. And this match, in my opinion, Gallows and Anderson d- d- do not deserve the tag titles. Uh, that's just my opinion. I, I they don't deserve the tag titles. In my opinion, they haven't done enough yet. I mean, Anderson, he just got beat, rolled up. Quick roll up on Raw a couple weeks ago before they even had their title shot. It's like, unless you beat up a new day, don't mean you get a title shot. It, I didn't feel like they deserved a title shot. Maybe in the future, but right now I'm not sold on them. And new day is just so over and just, you know, don't cereal and merchandise selling like crazy and bringing in little girls to the product and, you know, the gay demographic because they're so, you know, uniquely different. Uh, I just didn't feel like new day should have lost the titles, you know. Um, but, um, they didn't, and Big E came down, I uh, was about to, you know, mess up John Stewart, beat him down, and Big E came back down and beat them down, which was the disqualification, uh, so, guys, an interesting win by disqualification, but don't get the titles. Moving on, uh, the sixth woman, uh, tag team match for SmackDown, um, Nikki Bella came as a surprise entrant. Replacing Eva Marie, which I think is a work. It's just so convenient that she happened to be ready to go, and Nikki and Eva Marie, you know, you know, she just couldn't compete. So, you know, very convenient, but uh, pretty good match. Uh, went back and forth. Was no not that bullshit they put on SmackDown Raw. Everybody got time to shine. Everybody, uh, everybody went back and forth. Everybody had you know did their own thing. Uh, as well as being a group, uh, I thought it was a pretty good six woman match. One of the better ones we've seen in a while. Um. And Nikki Bella pull up the new TKO finisher to beat Carmella, which I knew once she came back, I knew she was going to win. Um, you know, and she's on SmackDown, obviously, because she was on SmackDown team in return. So she's on SmackDown with her brother-in-law and her man, John Cena. So I figured that was going to happen. I figured it was going to separate them uh, because she will probably be the face of the SmackDown women's division. Um... I'm not sure. Uh, it's, since, she, since she was on the heel team, I'm assuming she's heel. Um, but, you know. And I actually accidentally skipped over the match that came before that, which was um, the Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler World Championship match. And that match was. It was not what it should have been. The match was underrated. The match was underwhelming, in my opinion. It, it really. It's okay. It was too it, no, no. It was it was it was okay. It's it too short. Not enough spots. Dean Ambrose was out just acting crazy. He was just taunting and taunting and acting a fool and you know not even really being the Dean Ambrose we all know and love. I know he's way better than that in the ring. And Ziggler too. But neither one of them performance level that was expected of them. They really dropped the ball with this championship match. I really expected a whole lot more. I mean, one dirty deeds. It was all over. Not even a kick out. Nothing like it was. It was a piss poor championship defense. They should be ashamed themselves, honestly, with that particular match. Moving on, Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Good, good match. Uh, best match, probably the second best match of the night. It's the Styles and uh, Cena. Good match. A lot of good spots and everything. Uh, nice, good setups. Finn Balor beats Seth Rollins clean. Becomes the inaugural champion. Coup de gras, one coup de gras, not two, not three, and it was a good match. So, I can't get no complaints about that. Um, good back and forth. Both of them look good, and I knew 
I was hoping Finn Balor would win. He had to win because he debuted a demon at SummerSlam. He could not debut a demon and lose. It made the demon irrelevant. It would make the demon irrelevant and not matter and all hype. He had to win this match. He's going to be the top face on Raw while Rollins be the top heel. Now you had the United States Championship match, which came way towards the end of the night, which I thought was ridiculous. The match card set up where they actually put these matches at is just. It's ridiculous. Because, number, uh, number one, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is the most prestigious title in the company. That should have went last. Whether we like, you know, who's in the main event or not, that title is the Undisputed World Championship. That, by default, should be in the main event picture each and every time. Um, and some new title that has no name and no prestige should not be going after it. But the U.S. the U.S. Championship match didn't even happen. Roman Reigns came down after Rusev already made his entrance, and Rusev was so pissed off he just beat his ass and beat his ass, and then Roman Reigns came back and beat his ass, and then he beat his ass and left, beat his ass, left again, and beat his ass some more, and then he finally left and stayed gone, and so the match never even happened. Uh, so that was wasted by this time. It was cool. It was kind of cool to see Reigns whoop his ass, though. I ain't gonna lie, you know. They kind of saw a little bit of that heel in them, that heel everybody wants to see. Um, but, so that was that. And moving on to the main event, uh, completely underwhelming main event, Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton. Um, shoot. I mean, it was, it was okay, you know, um, for the spots that they did, Suplex City and everything, and already in the beatdown, and then the RKO, the RKO on the table out of nowhere, um, the RKO on the ring following the DDT, and, you know, um, and after that, and after that, he just put hands on Orton, and then you know he's busted open and just kept putting hands on him. And he couldn't continue in a, a tactical knockout TKO. It's very underwhelming uh, victory. I, I feel like they gonna have to do another match. That you can't end the match like that. But it may be question was it a work or was it a shoot? I don't know because it, it seemed pretty legit. So I don't I don't know. Um, but. Overall, the uh, the card was actually in uh, pretty solid. The overall, the pay per view was pretty solid. I, I enjoyed it. Um, it was entertaining for the most part, and I will give it a, a eight point two five out of ten. Pretty good, pretty solid uh, pay per view. Um, so that's it for me. Tell me what you guys think below. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.